Did you know that sometimes old trading cards are worth a bit of money? Yeah, I know, that's a real shocking revelation if you're a moron, but now because people are silly, you can massively overpay for some old Pokemon cardboard. Not me though, I'm gonna keep paying almost nothing for some bootleg crap. <laughs> Maybe the bootleg Pokemon card prices are being driven up too, and I'm super lucky that I got to these before the scalpers. So this is a very obvious bootleg box of Sun and Moon Forbidden Light Pokemon cards. I picked these up at the Great Canadian Dollar Store for two bucks. Kinda underpaid, I should probably go back and pay $20,000 for these. So, at first glance, this box looks pretty legit. I mean, except for the fact that no Pokemon Forbidden Light cards actually come in a box like this, and even before people started being idiots about it, this amount of cards would cost you probably a bit more than two bucks if they were real. Another tip off that things aren't quite right here is they use the old go-pokemon.com website. This site was used at one point, but is now completely abandoned and was about four years outdated by the time Forbidden Light came out. The back of the box might not immediately tip you off that things are kind of wrong here, but when you look for any copyright info and stuff, you'll see that it's missing. And the barcode sticker is kind of hastily slapped on here in between the pictures of Ultra Soul Galeo and Ultra Lunala. The blurb about the Forbidden Light card game on the back here is also ultra basic and was probably just taken from a wiki or something. Forbidden Light is the name given to the sixth main expansion of the Sun and Moon series of the Pokemon trading card game. In Japan, it was released as Forbidden Light, the sixth expansion in the Pokemon card game Sun and Moon era. It is based on Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, featuring Ultra Necrozma. On the barcode sticker, we've got the surprising label that this was made in China and imported by Great Canadian Dollar. Now, the bottom of the box contains one of the most interesting markings on here. Please retain this packaging. Oh wait, that's not it. We have a marking on here for Eco Shop. Now, this exact address they give on here doesn't actually work, but Eco Shop does have a very functional website. Eco, I guess, is a pretty major department store chain in Malaysia, who I guess also sells bootleg Pokemon cards. But bootlegs from Malaysia isn't exactly a super shocking thing. Now let's find out what million dollar treasures I no doubt got from this stupid bootleg Pokemon card box. So I guess the show-off cards are these reverse hollows, I believe, of Marsh Tomp and Bagon. So for these to be legit reverse hollows from this set, they should have like the pattern of their Pokemon typing in the hollow foil pattern, which of course these do not. Also, neither of these two cards are actually from the set Forbidden Light. But unlike with some of the other bootleg card packs I've looked at in the past that had cards from the previous set than the one they are actually advertising, these cards are actually from the set after the one they are advertising here. So this Marsh Tomp and Bagon card are actually from the set Sun and Moon Celestial Storm. The two front cards are also a bit different than every other card that was in this box as they have that kind of spirally pattern in the hollow foil. The print and text on these cards looks pretty correct for the most part, again, until you really inspect the finer details. The print on these bootleg cards for stuff isn't exactly the same as legit cards, so you'll notice that, like, lines break at different spots and some of the wording is slightly altered. Descriptions of the Pokemon are slightly different too, like Marsh Tomp should be Mudfish Pokemon, and here it's Angler Pokemon. These cards also use the Japanese logos to indicate which set they're from and their rarity. So you'll notice that the Marsh Tomp and Bagon had SM7 on them, which indicates they were from the 7th Sun and Moon set. But every other card has SM8, so they are from the set after Celestial Storm Lost Thunder. Now, the flavor text is without a doubt the doofiest thing on a lot of these cards. I was strengthened as I was strengthened while living in a mushy scaffold on the muddy. Yeah, sure, that checks out. What's Bagon got to say for itself? I thrust head thoroughly easily by the stone head, which is comparable to steel. It is due to stress 
which cannot fly in the sky. Bagon is a flower Pokemon? No, I don't think so. Next, we have Spinarak, who is a tadpole Pokemon. Oh, who knew? I thought it was a spider, but no, it was based on a tadpole the whole time. There are also fishermen who produce net, which captures fishy Pokemon more durable threads. I think the description and text here is from another Pokemon, just a suspicion. Once you recognize it as an enemy, you rashly crush it with scissors, with steel hardness. That at least sounds like something maybe to do with Caesar, but it's also an angler Pokemon, I guess. Suicune GX doesn't really have anything all that amusing on here. It just says if you defeat it, you get two prize cards, so get out of here. Mantine is a tadpole Pokemon. I didn't realize so many Pokemon were based on tadpoles. While swimming in the ocean, swimming in the ocean. Go figure. Tepu, aimed at leaving to eat, will sink to the fin. But I do not mind. I mind a little, that kind of broke my brain. Tepu, I guess, is the Japanese name for archer fish, so this text is probably something meant for remoraid. So, Chikorita, it's a tadpole. Marini, also a tadpole. Hopip, yep, that's a tadpole if I ever saw one. Professor Elm's Lecture, definitely a tadpole. Wobbuffet, yep, tadpole. Girafferig, tadpole. But believe it or not, not every single Pokemon was based on a tadpole. Others were based on anglers, and this just depends on if it's like an evolved Pokemon or not. Any evolved ones are anglers. Any regular base Pokemon are tadpoles, like Stantler here. Tadpole. Blissey, that's an angler. Chansey, tadpole. Granbull, angler. Snubble, tadpole. And so on with this nonsense. And you know what that makes Bagon? The only special flower Pokemon. So, Girafferig, what do you have to say for yourself? There is a small brain on the tail. Be careful as you come close to it and will bite in response to the smell. Stupid bitey brain giraffe tadpole. Wobbuffet! I live quietly in the dark to hide from the black tail. Do not attack from yourself. Good advice. Professor Elm's lecture sucks. I don't want to hear it. All right, here comes Hopip. Drifting by the wind drifts. <laughs> Drifting by the wind drifts, it is said spring will come when Hankyo gathers in Nyoma. Oh, I always figured that was the case. Ha, Nico being on here is actually pretty amusing, as that is the beta name for Hopip, which was supposed to be more cat-like, and Haneko means leaf cat. And Noyama, I guess, kind of means hills and field. Marini, tell us all about yourself. Go around the ocean floor and the coast. Coral growing at the head of Sunny Go is my favorite thing. All right, cool. I'll take your word for it. Chikorita, you weirdo, I don't choose you. Explore the surrounding temperature and humidity with the leaves of the head. I love taking sunlight. Nihilego, or something like that. Get mad if I said it wrong, I don't care. Always remember the weird jellyfish, as it was the first ultra beast that appeared in Sun and Moon. I mean, tadpole. It's a tadpole. A type of UB. It is unknown whether there is a will, but occasionally shows a girl like gesture. Whoa, look at it showing a girl like gesture there, sure. Poey Pole is one of the less ugly ultra beasts. Ultra Beast is familiar enough to be chosen as partner for departure in other worlds. I guess they're saying it's supposed to be a starter in another world. Mm. Well, we got a naming error on this one as Meganium has been downgraded to its second stage form, Bayleaf. The breath exhaled by Mega Neum has the power to revive the dead plants. Wow, they had two chances at the name and didn't get right either time. Tyranitar GX is boring. Foratress. It sticks to trees and does not move. Scatter hard shell fragments and drive away those approaching. The Meryl card came pre-damaged, so you know, that's pretty sweet. 
Because the oil that is lighter than water is clogged at the head of the tail, it becomes a substitute for the swimming bag. <laughs> Shuckle GX blows like all the other GXs. Just like Bustlin' whatever. And also Lugia GX. Double Whitney's, what does it mean? It means absolutely nothing! Get the hell out of here! You notice how uncentered this card is? That means it's worthless. My values! So, yeah, the item cards don't really have anything that gets super ridiculous on them either. The Stallhammer card also came pre-damaged and has a big old crease in it, so that's cool, I guess. Let's get that info on the water, Bunny Azumarill! Mongolia, like Hungary, camouflages in his muscles. What the hell is that supposed to mean? these stupid white lines on here? Damn it, Water Bunny. Snubble, everyone's favorite bulldog, tadpole Pokemon. A grown voice makes the opponent insecure. I usually stay at ease and sleep for half the day. Yeah, that would put me at unease, I guess. Ah, uh, our bulldog's grown up to be an angler. Cowardly more than blue. Popular with young women receiving gap with appearance. Sure, Grand Bull, I'm sure that makes sense to someone. Time to get the lowdown on Chansey. People who find it because they are few in number and have fast escaping feet are lucky. Are they saying the few who manage to escape Chansey are lucky? <laughs> Our tadpole Chansey's now grown up into the angler Blissey. Fluffy hair is a sensor. You can catch Pokemon and people's feelings. Give me my damn feelings back from your hair, egg. All right, now let's find out how Stantler the deer is actually a tadpole. The bending state of the tuna delicately changes the flow of the surrounding air and creates a magical space. They just really never expected anyone to bother reading these, did they? All right, Eriados time. Shed threads from the buttocks and mouths. Tie prey with yarn and take body fluids slowly. So that's a real nonsense way to talk about how Eriados kills things. It's the painty Pokemon Smeargle tadpole. Are you sick of me saying tadpole yet? Too bad. I paint and mark a mark showing my territory. So the walls of the city with many doubles are full of graffiti. Get your mark a marks out of my doble, Smeargle. Two cannon is damaged. Oh no, my values. Explode the gas in the body in the beak and fire the tree seed. Power to shatter Oya too. I never knew, nor did I want to know, that Toucanon's special power was having explosive farts come out its mouth. Peaky Pack! Don't know why I did that. Pigeon Feeds! It is used as an attack by firing from the mouth as a bullet as a spring after eating. So it shoots its food at you, which is better than Toucanon's explosive fart mouth. And Peaky Pack, again, but a different Peaky Pack, however, it says the same thing for the text. Trumbeak, getting ready with a Kamehameha, apparently. I turn back the beak and squeal various kinds of sounds. It is quite noisy, so you will not be hated by your neighbor. I think they mean you will be hated by your neighbor if you got this stupid noisy bird up in your place. Time for the silly Pokemon alphabet thing, unknown. It resembles the character of ancient civilization, one of the seven wonders of the world, whether the character is the first or a un-nun is the beginning. An un-nun. It's right on the damn card, you idiots. Chin it's getting a little overly hot and humid in here, so I might be starting to lose it a bit more than usual anyway. I live on the ocean floor where light does not reach. Communicate with friends by shining their tentacles. No light should ever reach you. 
And here's a super toxic Pokemon to know, Toxapex. Even if I suffer from severe pain three days and three days when suffering from the poison of do the after effect remains. <laughs> yeah, I hear you there, Toxapex. And now we have Bayleaf. But, you know, real bay leaf, unlike meganium bay leaf. The spicy smell smells from the bud of the neck makes the cheerful person cheerful. Well, if I learned anything, it sure is that I love the repeating, repeating, repeatingness of these repeat cards. But two cannon and a stupid fart mouth can stay the hell away from me. I'm not accepting any cereal from you, you stupid gross bird. And that's forbidden light for ya. With no forbidden light cards. And that's exactly what we want in these things. Everything to be wrong. Yay! The cards aren't flimsy feeling or anything, they're about as thick as real ones, and really it's the small details and the hollow foil patterns that give these away for the most part. They might think everything's a tadpole and an angler, but they did at least only get one name wrong. However, some cards were damaged new right out of the box, and that's pretty pathetic. Four. They're just copies for the most part of the Japanese cards with some wonky translations in some parts. Zero. The Pokedex entries on these cards are quite wonkily wonky and love repeaty repetition. Seven. The box could quite easily fool some. It's down to people in the know about the packaging and those who would inspect the finer details that would realize that things aren't quite right. Five. That spirally hollow foil pattern is pretty much the immediate signifier of bootleg Pokemon cards at this point. Four. And the bootleg Zos overall is six! I'm glad the Pokedex text was so broken as that is really the only highlight on these particular cards, but it was a rather amusing one. <laughs> Whoa, 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 hold the video for a sec. I found some hidden treasures inside the box. Yeah, I can't believe I got these. I guess it's runoff from cutting up the boxes. Pretty sweet. <laughs>